<laughs> Hi, everybody. It's weird for me to um, be sitting with my back to you, but the microphone's in front of me, so I'm going <laughs> to pretend like that's you. Um, and then it doesn't feel so weird. <laughs> so, oh, there's Kyla. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> so we have Kyla and Talbot. And Talbot, Kyla's trying to be off camera. So depending on which way I move, she's... I'm going to mute myself. You have and to wait till I, I make a funny face and then you can duck out of the way. And then I have to change my quality. Yeah, at least like 720p or lower. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. So I'm, I'm excited to, um, to draw today. I am going to focus on getting everything in the right place more than, you know, contrast and composition and soft and hard edges. I'm going to talk, well, I might go there. <laughs> it might happen, but my, my priority, my goals are to convey tools and techniques for drafting um, as I go, because we can take the mystery out of it a little bit and show all the ways that you can succeed. And then when you've practiced this and your eye becomes more and more trained through practice, you will seem miraculous because <laughs> that's what happens. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a practice thing. And um, helping yourself succeed, basically. So, and then, you know, continuing to do it until you get good at it, just like, just like anything else. Um, so what I have around me, there's many, many things, um, but what I'm using today is 11 by 14. I'm using a Bristol paper. It's kind of like a cardstock. It's heavyweight, it's very smooth, it's, it's fun with charcoal because it's smooth. It doesn't get tons of, like it's easy to smooth out the charcoal. It doesn't get tons of texture. And I am gonna use charcoal in part because I can work quickly with it. It's dark so you will see the contrast easily. And I can do some shading to get different values and talk about, talk about that um, as we go. I can do that easier than, than pencil. Um, I have some smudge sticks, which you do not need, but are really fun to play with if you start doing charcoals. And I have the kind of eraser that I like, which is a kneaded eraser. Um, it's, it, it picks everything up without making a, like leaving behind a trail of rubbed off eraser. It doesn't, it doesn't rub off. It just, it just picks up the graphite or charcoal. And then other tools, um, I'm going to show, this is a value finder, not as necessary today for drawing, but does help when you get into painting and working on values. I have a ruler, but it's pretty easy to use a pencil or um, even a paintbrush handle or anything to find sort of relative um, proportionate things that are proportionate to each other. So you don't have to actually measure. You're just looking for, you know, the ball is as wide as the cube, that kind of, that kind of stuff. And then I made a couple of other little tools, one of which is just a cutout square. It can be any size and it's helpful in determining negative shapes and angles relative to vertical and horizontal. When you get into painting, the square is really helpful too for isolating colors and values. So sort of taking away the big picture, just looking at a small section is, um, a helpful tool. So I just cut out a two inch square out of a piece of paper. And then I also made a grid on a sleeve. So it might have a little bit of reflection. Um, 
But a grid, same thing, but except all your squares are right there. So you don't, <laughs> it's all set. Um, and I can, I put this picture in the sleeve, but I can take that out and use the sleeve, you know, just on top of any reference. You can have, I could not find my, I think it's called acetate which is basically a sleeve that's not a sleeve, it's just clear clear paper, but it's great to have that to um, overlay. It's very helpful even when you're going one-to-one, -one, but it's also helpful if you need to blow something up um, to scale. So, but at the base, at the core of everything, you just need a piece of paper <laughs> and, and a pencil, so. Someone we, asked, how do I sharpen pencil charcoal? Pencil charcoal? Well, like the squared off. It's not a circle for a pencil sharpener, is it? Oh, this, like, um, charcoal sticks? Mm -hmm. I don't sharpen them. They'll, they'll just get sharp as you use them. So, like, this one... Like, you can rub it on a piece of paper. It'll just, it'll just sharpen itself just by holding it at an angle. Um... It's too soft for any kind of sharpener. I don't know if you could just use a little knife and and tick it sharp, but usually what I do is I use various pieces, and then when I get to a detail, I look for one that has a that has a sharp edge, and then I can, you know, I can use it um, where I need to. So we're gonna start with the shapes. This isn't my best foot forward on photographing um, these shapes. I realized afterwards that I did not, um, I didn't bounce any light onto it. But since we're not as worried about form and values today, um, I'm not too worried about it. It's gonna serve us very well. The one reason to think about value is because looking, squinting your eyes and kind of looking at values, meaning light to dark, can help you see a shape. So if we only focus on lines or outer edges, our brain can do a lot to kind of trip us up. But if we start looking at, especially when we get to the, to the face picture, if we start looking at the shapes that are made by the contours and the values, it's just another helpful helpful thing. So let's get rid of this. And this one, like I made my sphere bigger than it is in the picture because I had a lid and that was the size of it. So it is helpful to draw a circle with a circle. You know, we're, none of us are that good. So <laughs> don't be afraid to use, to use a lid. Any questions so far? I wonder how many people are drawing along and Versus how watching. many people are going to just watch. So I, um, Kyla was, helped me have these printed out. And for today, I printed them out at the size that I'm working. So I think that's going to be helpful to really demonstrate. That's what a one-to-one -one ratio <laughs> means. So I can say... Um, I could say, okay, you know, the face of the cube is, is two inches and the width of the ball is two and a half inches. And I can go right over here and, and make those marks. I'm going to try not to measure so much and to use all of the other tricks because often we are working from life or we are working from a smaller image. So I'm going to use the other techniques that I have of which I made a list and maybe I can, um, you guys can either take notes or I can type them up and, um, and put them in the post. We're about 50-50 on watching and drawing. Okay, so far. okay. I can't wait to see. So first, I'm gonna, I start big, easy shapes. Um, I just wanna get a layout. Anything can be undone. I'm not trying to, you know, start my cone and get every detail. I'm going to start big, easy shapes. So the first thing that I see is that the horizon line or the, the, the back line is about a third of the way down the piece of paper. So I'm just going to get that in there. 
And then that gives me a basis from which to place these other, these other objects. Same thing, the, um, the sphere is just right of center. Now this is without measuring, um, but that's kind of how I'm seeing it. So that's where I'm gonna put it. And it also looks to me as if it's fairly bisected by that back line, maybe just a little, a little high. I'm gonna cheat and use my little, <laughs> my little tape thing, which is uh, probably a little bit bigger than this, but that's okay. It's gonna help me get a nice shape. If you had a lid or anything, So I like to, just like needle felting, I like to work the hole and then refine, refine. So um, I'm just gonna start loosely laying things in, looking at them relative to each other, and then I will refine. Suze Uber said, cheat when you can. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's, there's so many um, ways to help yourself. Like that's what, you know, I, I sort of went through a lot of time thinking like I need to draw just because I see it and I can do it. And really there's tons of ways to help yourself. So another tool that I love and that I use a lot is vertical, where are things relative to vertical and horizontal. So for example, on the cube, we've got a corner facing us. So on buildings and cubes, as it goes into the distance, it narrows. So it's gonna narrow here. This line is gonna be shorter than this line, and this line is gonna be shorter than this line. So an easy way to see that is to hold this up and see that relative to horizontal, I mean, you could get particular and, and get a little compass out, but I think it's helpful just to, just to do this. So that's a, like, what is this doing? I can even just hold the edge of the paper up and see what it's doing. It's going slightly, that's interesting. So I would have thought that this line went down and that's how I drew it, but it actually is going slightly up. So I just corrected myself. Another thing that I look at is negative shapes. Negative, a negative shape is what is not the object. Like what is this shape that's being created by the space between these three objects? And that is a helpful way to move forward in your, in your drawing. I keep burping. <laughs> I don't hear you. Good. <sighs> Okay, so, so far we have big easy shapes to start, work on the whole and refine as you go, negative shapes, um, I'll get into when we get on the face, the animals and pizza shapes that, that came from um, Adriana who I took the, the painting workshops with, and then proportions, so sizes relative to each other. So in other words, is what is this distance from one side of the cube to the other? What else is it equal to? So let's just look, it's four inches. So let's see what else is four inches. That's three. Ah, the length of the cylinder is four inches. And 
the cone is almost four inches. So in my drawing, I can see, all right, I already, I made the cylinder too, way too tall. So my eyes are tricking me a little bit. Sue asked if you're using a kneaded eraser. I think yes. she popped on. Yes, after you kneaded said. eraser, yeah. So proportions are important. The grid overlay and the little square we have. And then another technique that we'll show maybe when we do the face is turning things upside down. Um, I use that a lot, especially when I was doing self-portraits because we, you know, we're very familiar with ourselves and um, I needed to disrupt my brain by turning turning images upside down so that I was seeing the actual lines, not trying to draw what I think my face looks like. And I, I still didn't get it quite right, so. So basic shapes are a great way, great way to get started and if you can um, have a sketchbook, have a sketchbook like in your living room or wherever you, in the kitchen, wherever you kind of just tend to sit and relax and just start drawing things that are around you. Um, learning to see everything that's going on takes practice. And drawing from life is, um, is really different from drawing from a 2D picture because this is already all flattened out for me. So that it's taking a little bit of the work off of my brain. Whereas in life, just a little turn or a little change in perspective can, can change your drawing. So the shading that's happening can start to give our drawn objects form. And my light is coming from the left. And like I said, I didn't bounce light off. I would have put a white, um, just a white piece of paper or panel here. You can see some bounced light on the cube here because it's coming off of the, the cylinder that's lit up. So, and then these are fun. They just, you know, depending on which one you use, it, it takes away um, charcoal and smooths it out. Or if you use the finer ones, it really pushes it in and keeps it dark. So that's why there's these different sizes. So they're a lot of fun, especially if you, you know, when you get into faces and and then you can take them and even pull charcoal around a little bit to get more subtle, subtle shading going on. I wish I could see everybody. That would be way more fun. So if I had bounced light, there would be a light reflection on here, on here, and over here. So it wouldn't be as light as where the light is directly hitting, but it there would be a little highlight. Any questions right now? <clears throat> No, I think everyone's mesmerized. Someone <laughs> did say, I'm not a good drawer, but what you're showing and explaining is so helpful and will help with felting. Yes, everything that we're learning like to see. If, if, if you wanna do you know, more realism in your felting, 
that this all contributes because you're it's the same thing you're teaching your eyes um to check proportions and check i gotta go right-handed here for a minute or else i'd be all in the way We have people working just with pencil and paper, mm -hmm. so they're trying to like rub the pencil with their fingers. <laughs> I know. And... I know. Pencil. Um, let's see. Let me work with pencil for a minute. I don't know. It's kind of like easier to draw. I feel like than charcoal because it's very targeted. But definitely, when it comes to um, when it comes to values, the pencil gets tricky. So what I would do with pencil is something like this. I would cross hatch. I would come this way and then this way. Let me try and do it on a spot that's not as sort of cross hatch following the form a little bit. I'm giving it a slight curve. Trisha said straight lines are hard for her. Yeah, use a ruler, Trish. That's one of those help yourself <laughs> tools. <laughs> oh, so funny. She's not a straight line kind of person. I'm said. not a straight line person <laughs> either. Um, yeah, cross hatching is fun. Tammy says she's not an artist. Last drawn picture was probably junior high. <laughs> You know, it's just, you gotta be something in you going, I, I wanna draw, <laughs> you know, I wanna draw that. I want, I wanna get good at this. And, and, um, and when you, if you just want that, then it will be. You can't hit a target you're not aiming for, right? Especially not if you need to shoot in a straight line. <laughs> so we have a little shadow from the ball onto the cylinder. How is the um, pencil coming across? It's coming across okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pencil I can definitely get in here and really draw charcoal is a little more kind of feels a little more out of your control a bit but i do it does kind of keep me loose when i'm working especially on something like the face okay so i feel like when i move i we see you <laughs> stop <laughs> you don't see me you Thank see you. this no you see what? this of me oh that's true i guess <laughs> I have to be like down here. Um, okay, I feel like I don't need to keep going on the perfecting my shapes picture because I think the face is going to take a lot more time. So should I switch to the face? Does anyone have questions about about where we where we are? Let me critique my own work here. I think it's pretty good. I think if I worked on it more, like for example. Like if I put the dark back here, when I look at the picture, the ball is popping forward. So why? Like I think I have it in the right place. In other words, if I were to take the ruler and come off the angle of the um, of the cube, pretty much hits the bottom of the ball. All right, so I do have it, I do have it tucked back more. So in my drawing, I have two options. <laughs> I can either, cheat my cube up, like push the bottom of the cube up, or if I were to really correct my drawing, like pull the ball forward. Like if this were a person's face and everything had to be in exactly the right place. I don't know, I don't know which thing would be better, but that is one thing that is off. Definitely off. And I think angling this 
I think I have this not quite angled enough. So when I put that there, I look at this negative space and see what kind of triangle it is. And when I put that there, I can see that this is um, a lesser triangle. I know there's a <laughs> geometric term. Isosceles. We're bound to shapes. <laughs> so that means I have to angle this back. All right, that makes my ball come forward a little bit more, my sphere, I should say. Putting some dark back here will make it come forward. Does anyone have any questions about this before I get rid of it? I have not seen any. Okay. There we go. Okay, so for the face, so human face was like the request of everybody. <laughs> and I was hesitant, but I think we can do it because it is, you got to have the hunger and that's what everybody wanted. I picked this as a i looked at a lot of straight on faces and i said you know what i don't want us to draw two eyes a nose and a mouth i want us to draw have to draw what we see which when you go three quarters that's what's gonna happen for sure Random shape drawing number two. So I think I will work horizontally. I did the initial one vertically. And I'm pretty happy with it. I did not like check all my work. Um, I don't feel it. I was working from my laptop image when I did this. I didn't have the printout. So I was not working one-to-one. -one. If you do want to work one-to-one -one on your laptop, you can zoom your image in until, like you could measure the head and say, ah, that is the size that I want it on my piece of paper. I've done that um, with oil paintings before. But I'm pretty happy with it, and I worked on this for about an hour the other day. So I will just attempt to do the same <laughs> and talk as I go. But I was thinking I could work horizontally I don't know, I don't know which feels better. Let me turn this around and see if it feels better. Maybe that feels better to me. How does that look? I'm waiting for my, <laughs> for my little live stream to catch up to my Well, I think that looks okay. Mm -hmm. And periodically I could turn it towards you because you guys are like, ha you know, there's no way to avoid the slight angle. Um, but if you need to see things straight on, I could turn it towards you. So while I'm procrastinating getting started, <laughs> I can just say I'm so excited about our Fiber Fairy on the 31st. That's my next next thing I'm really looking forward to. Okay. So let's start easy, big shapes. I mean, really a face, almost always you're drawing an egg. Um, and compositionally, I would like to leave more space to her left in the direction that she's looking than uh, to the right. So I may be cutting off part of her head if I'm going to work 
um, if I'm going to work at this at this same scale. So right away, I'm just going to go ahead and check from the left edge of her face to her hairline is four inches, four plus a little bit of inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and map that out. Already I have it like bigger than I thought. So, um, do you typically draw upright or flat on a table or desk? Um, some <laughs> angle is good because when you're flat, everything's foreshortened and then you stand it up and your picture is short. Okay. Yeah. You found that with 2d felting as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The left side of her face to me looks pretty vertical, so I'm just gonna put that in there. And then um, I'm sort of trying to determine the angle of the chin, and that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing for now. I'm gonna check everything. Her jawline is I feel just just tipping up from horizontal. And I will check that as well. I can just put I can put a piece of paper or I can put a ruler. Let me get my little square thingy bobber. So when you do this, just make sure that your <laughs> whatever you're holding is horizontal. You know what I mean? Like don't be like, oh, that's horizontal and have your have your paper tip. Um and so I'm gonna check the side of the face. Yep, pretty much vertical. Definitely vertical. And then what's happening here? Where is that? What angle is that? And I can check a few more proportions. Um, I'm going to just take a stab at nose and stuff, and then I'm gonna check um, check where everything is before I get any farther in detail. It was really fun seeing your um, preliminary sketches. They were they were very good. So. I would love to do another another critique. Mm. All right, it looks like something. <laughs> If you were very new at this, would you be like measuring the length of her nose to figure out where mm -hmm. to put the tip of her nose? I and... like to start, you can. I like to start and see how I do and okay. then kind of be like, okay, what's what's going on here? Like, so I'll start checking things like, um, I just, I don't know, look for, look for things that make sense to you to check against each other. So maybe the distance between the pupils, and you can measure, but really if you're not going one-to-one, -one, it's better just to hold a pencil or something and put your finger there and then just say, okay, that's as long as her nose, the tip of her nose to right at the bridge of her nose. So I can come in here. Oh, I actually had that pretty good. And then turn it this way. So in the beginning, you can start doing these proportions, but until like you build piece by piece and get more, you don't know, you don't know, does that need to be up or down? You know what I mean? Like there's, there's still a figuring, figuring out to do. Um, so yeah, I like to go from what I what I see and then start refining. 
Now, this is a time when all these values really can help you make shapes because if I squint my eyes, like I can see this shape that is made <laughs> by her nose and lip. And so I can sort of draw this weird shape over here and shade it in and that helps me. Another approach is to go ahead and squint your eyes or talking about tools, there are apps that you can put your pictures into and it will change your picture to a grayscale or to simplified. And that is like, you don't have to squint your eyes. <laughs> the app does it. But if I squint my eyes and break things down to dark, medium, and light, I can put that in here. So I can see dark. Medium. Obviously very dark behind her. I can see the way the light is hitting her lids, what that's creating. very dark behind her. I'm not gonna go too crazy with that because I'm left-handed and I'll smear it all over. I feel like I don't have this quite right here. Like, I don't know if I have this too long or maybe, let me get my pencil, I think it'll be easier. I think this angles, I had it too squared off. So that angles and then this angles and then it straightens out. It's better. I'm gonna use my pencil for a minute. Um, hopefully, yeah. we'll see how, if you guys can see it, but it does, it does give me a little more control. I did the other drawing entirely with charcoal, which is fun. It's its own kind of exercise. So I'm gonna take away a little bit of the definition because I will add it back in. Mouths are hard, especially she has like a, so mouths, I feel like it's almost easier to look at values. So in other words, her upper lip, like squint your eyes and make that shape of a value that it is. And then her lower lip is lighter, but as it turns a corner, there's a darkness back here. And there's a darkness here. And there's always like this little kind of soft edge to our mouths. Another great thing is to see where things are in line to each other vertically and horizontally. So if I go up, let me get the white piece of paper. I feel like it's easier to see. Tammy Lehman has an alien. Oh no! <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> It'll get better. If I go up, straight up from the corner of her mouth, that is right at the edge of her nostril. So if I go right up from the corner of her mouth, that means the edge of her nostril is right there. So I might have this in the wrong place. A little lower, right there. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to go back to charcoal because I can cover ground. So when I'm drawing the earring, I'm actually looking at negative space. I'm looking at this shadow area of the hair under the ear. I often work with um, a, a fixative. Um, I won't today, but because I'm trying to keep it, it's just it's very few me. But plus, your your picture stays um, easier to work with if you don't use fixative as you go. You can keep erasing things. As soon as you add fixative, it's it's hard to hard to erase it. I do feel I'm going to have to enter into a little bit of concentration <laughs> and stop talking at some point, but I'm, I'm going to keep trying. Rena says faces are hard. Yeah. They asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, faces are hard. It's, it's the trick is to not think of it as a face. So that's where the upside down comes in. So let's, let's, let's try that for a second. Even though I feel like I'm actually doing okay this time. Maybe that's because I drew it once before. When you turn your drawing upside down, Your, your eyes can't absorb details as, oh, an eyelid goes like this. You know, you're sort of forced to see the angles and everything relative to each other more. So I'm gonna work like this for a minute and see what changes. Sometimes it's just good to get, when I was doing my, um, I've been going to a life, um, a figure drawing group and some people just totally get charcoal all over their white piece of paper before they even start. I like really? to work on toned paper. Mm -hmm. um, I like to work on toned paper because then I have that mid-tone already. This area gave me fits uh, when I drew it the first time. So upside down might be very helpful. Which area was this um, her, part of the chin? This the, little, like, I, I don't know, the top, her I top lip. Oh, I'm sure that has a name. It's your philtrum. Your philtrum? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right, so let's see where the corner, where the eye is. If we go straight up and down, the corner of this eye. Oh, that's not a great land. Uh... I'm looking at the shape that's made by the dark area and her neck. It's not too bad. Okay. 
And then let's look for another thing. Um, so off the corner of her eye, horizontal is just to the top of her ear. That looks about right. All right, let me get this eye. I just wanted to make sure that I had this about in the right place. Yeah, I definitely, I did not work upside down the last time at all, and I'm definitely seeing things differently. Now, a couple of times I've gone upside down and then turned it over and I was like, oh my gosh, that's worse. <laughs> Not always the cure-all that we hope. When I did it with a group that came here for a class, I liked... Um, I liked seeing how the work that I did upside down was sort of like more dynamic, okay. like less dulled down in a way. Um, it it kind of like didn't look like my stuff. I was like, oh, who drew, who drew that? Like, it just, it looks different. All right, I'm going to turn this back over. Yeah, that looks like a nightmare to me. So I'm not sure if it's because it's actually accurate and my brain wants to see it differently or if it is a nightmare, but we're going to figure it out now. are tricky her lids are like mm -hmm. half closed I love like what's happening with her mouth in the picture now whether I can get that to happen or not I don't know the shading is helping a lot in this image because it is very strongly lit. So I'm gonna start using these because my finger is removing too much.
this doesn't like this doesn't look right to me like where this is So, and it's good to like, you know, fix things before you get things too hard set. So go ahead and blur something out if you need to. You don't want to get trapped in the lines you've made um, and not be able to, to see beyond them. Um, so by using this smudge stick instead of more charcoal, I can get a little bit of control over it um, without like adding, adding, adding. All right, one thing that I see is that I have these two lines going um, congruent, what's that mean? Parallel? Parallel <laughs> for too long. Um, so something's gotta change here. This is gonna go like this more this is going to come in more a little tighter go ahead and firm that up a little bit and then this this I like the bump in her nose too. So I'm going to draw it even though it's more about color changes. That, yeah. Or value changes, I mean. Oh, that's another helpful thing is printing your reference image out in black and white can be really helpful. So the eye it, compositionally is drawn towards the highest contrast and the sharpest lines. So if I want the focus to be, you know, here, I'm going to soften anything that is um, away from that or that is not near that and then key up, you know, the highest contrast and the softest lines where I want the focus to be. All right, so I don't, this line is not strong like that and that's bothering me. So I'm gonna take that out a little bit. And then I feel like a little more shading in here is gonna help me see everything. It's getting better. So I look for kind of shapes that are important in helping define form. And one at like high and light and dark. So one I feel is this highlight, right? in the corner of her eye. So I'm really making sure to distinguish that and keep that. The cheekbone definitely is one. So right now this looks very flat because there's no differentiation between here and here and here. So if I can get a little bit of um, color in there, 
and then a little bit of shading here. Now she's going to start to have a cheekbone. Because this will stay nice and bright. This is a nice bright spot. There's a couple of highlights on her nose. Definitely right here. Oh my gosh, what did I do over here? Took a whole side of her face out with my with my big mitt. I love her dark eyes. Yeah, so if we were together, like you guys could just be like, help, and then we could look at it together. We could help each other. In my family, um, we show each other our work and we're like, what's, what's wrong with this? And then we help each other fix it. Deb says it's amazing just how a little more shading can change the look so much. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, she went back and forth from like monster to like, okay, you know, a few times in the other one I worked on. So, you know, it's especially with the charcoal because so much is getting moved around um if you're working in pencil it's going to be a little more controlled and a little more kind of drawing i'm sort of i'm getting into quite a bit of shading but without you know too much investment you can get set up to To draw. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, get rid of white where I don't want it. push some of this charcoal in so I don't keep taking it off with my knuckles. full I should say and slopes down more that's better So draw things around you, get, like get on Google Images and just <laughs> look for something that interests you and draw it. Um, just gotta begin. And then when you return to your needle felting and your animals, 
there might be a change in how you are perceiving um, proportions and placement of an eye or really seeing where the corners of the mouth are or you know any number of things okay if I were not on camera I would do quite a bit of leaning in to figure out what's going on with her nose um, but I can I have to sort of stay back here Sometimes you can pick up charcoal somewhere from somewhere and then put it somewhere else. Unintentionally? Uh, oh. Both. Okay. Um, so like in a little detail, I can, like if I just want a little smear of charcoal, I can pick some up from a heavy, heavier, you know, place mm -hmm. and then... I think in both my pictures she's looking a little more sad than she hmm. is in, in the photograph Adriano were watching, I would be horrified. <laughs> How do you know he's not? I don't know he's not. I mean, I doubt. <laughs> I highly <laughs> doubt he is, but it's, uh, you know, that's your, that's your teacher. <laughs> teacher watching you teach. <laughs> This got, I think this got angled in too much. So I'm gonna pull it, try to pull it out again. I'm not sure if I can. be drawing. Yeah, there's very quiet. So in other words, I sucked this <laughs> side of her face back when maybe it should be a little bit more forward. So the smudge sticks are great because the tricky thing about working with charcoal is you can put a line and it's very is very dark. Um, so it very quickly you know kind of changes what's happening, and on a face that's that's tricky. Tricky stuff. Trace said it seems like her lips are parted ever so slightly. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah, it's really it's really pretty.
and there yeah it's <laughs> it's just super subtle it's like oops uh super duper subtle what's happening here and if we were to get it just right it would be a really wonderful part of the picture The lower lip loses a little bit of definition. Um, it, you know, just be aware of not drawing lines that aren't there, um, like on eyes and lips and noses. You don't wanna draw the outer line of lips. You wanna draw the corner of the mouth, you know, maybe the, um, the little bow shape at the top. Cause as soon as you start, you know, trying to define it too much, that's when it loses uh, realism. There's actually quite a bit of shading here. Someone said, I think you have the eyes open a bit more than in the photo. Mm -hmm. The top line is straighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Patty Cornelius has a question. When you're standing in a dark room, yet you see shapes, how do you know where and what colors are creating the shapes? Everything looks gray, but she knows they aren't. <laughs> so th that's about value. Those are values that are making the shapes. So at dusk, sometimes everything, even outside, like everything that's saturated with color when the sun is hitting it is now becomes this gray, you know, this muted gray. So that's a value. Um, not color. Let's see what we can do about this, about this eye here. Teresa says it's usually most beautiful right before everything goes gray. Mm-hmm. Every time I work on this side, I F up the left side with my hand. Hmm.
you're under extra pressure. You're like live and everyone's watching. I know. It's like a it's a lot of pressure. I was like, well, I hope I can draw today because not every day is a good day <laughs> for drawing. It's getting better, it's getting better. I need to eliminate this light here, it's just too, it's too light. It's light relative to the dark around it, but I've got it light, you know, even relative to the light spots, so. Let's look at my other one. This one's a little like, I guess I just have worked on it more. Deborah Paul says, so glad you said that not every day is a good drawing day. <laughs> not every day is built for everything, anything sometimes. You gotta know what you're working with on that day. And I'm being a little bit lazy. Like there's important things happening <laughs> right on this eyelid and I'm not like, as invested in figuring it out as I should be right now. In other words, I should be probably turning this upside down and making sure I'm getting these little details correct. So where I have this darkness, I'm gonna use a stronger um, smudge stick to press it in and it'll stay dark. I keep kind of lifting it back up, but now it'll, now it'll stay there. Same with here, there's an important thing happening here. And I think I need to get this lower lip fuller by bringing this lightness out just a little bit farther. Ah, my eraser wasn't shaped right. Okay. Hmm. If I were consigned to make this person's portrait, I would double check what I have going on in this area in terms of the angle of the nose and um, the lips and everything because I, I do send, I do, I can tell that it's off. Um, but since I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it.
Yeah, charcoal is cool. Like the harder you press on it, the darker it is. It's fun. So let me do a little bit of checking because I, I feel like I'm off. I think her eyes aren't far enough apart is one thing that's happening. So if I say from outer eye to outer eye, oh, I'm good there. Hmm. From eyeball to eyeball, I'm good there. So that means something else <laughs> is disproportionate. Something doesn't look right, but you check it and it's right, it means something relative to it isn't right. Teresa says, I never realized that drawing is so back and forth rather than just a step-by-step -step forward action. Mm -hmm. She is emerging right before our very eyes Aww. like magic with tiny adjustments. Aww. It's, you know, we talked at, in my course, um, my, my drawing course about uh, dot matrix, you know, approach, which is like, start up here, get this exactly perfect. I, I can't work that way. Um... I have to fuss around and move around. I like to see the whole, the whole picture kind of, yeah, kind of emerge, you know, instead of getting super detailed right away. Doesn't help me. I guess I don't know how to check my, I don't know how to check my work that way. Like I feel like I would get all detailed and then all of a sudden be like, whoops, that's not right. Debbie says, I think you don't have the tilt of her head correct. Yes, she's a little bit, um, she's a little bit coming off upright more than, um, more than tilted back. And I can get that a little bit in this area. But I did smush this back a little bit. So um, protruding her chin forward could help. And then getting this, so getting this tipped back. I'm totally open to criticism because I'm sitting here in it and I, I'm not stepping away from it. Um, and you guys are getting that, you know, when we take a picture of something 2D and then we can kind of mm -hmm. see it, you guys are getting the benefit of seeing it through uh, through the screen. So fire away. The cast shadow of her lips on Sarah's right. Let me check that angle. Cast shadow of her lips. Not sure which aspect. Mm. So the chin is, it is not really sticking out. Are you a tiny more squared off on the chin? Mm -hmm. I think I need to come out here a little bit. All right. That's uh, a little better. Second part of the jawline is upright mm. in your version. More like this. Is it high enough? 10 o'clock to the earring. 10 o'clock to the earring. We'll do something in one second to check that. I might not be able to rescue the angle of her face so much. Okay, let's check a few things. Um, earring, 
horizontal line to the corner of the mouth. Mm, it's a little, it's a little bit high. Um, corner of the mouth to the nostril. What's the Your matter? Your chin is a little too Jay Leno. <laughs> I, I just, a little too I strong. Just, you just, I just made it. it more strong. But maybe that is a product of. Let me try this eraser because I can really target this. Getting her lip fuller and I have a little electric eraser, which is uh, great for getting targeting little spots. It's like tiny tweaks. Yeah. Do you prefer sketching like this or painting? Um, oh, I can see another thing. Um, painting. I mean, you know, what, whatever. I, I like all of it. It's just painting is fun. Check the tip of her nose in proportion to the nostril. Okay. Wow, it's like charcoal by committee. I like it. <laughs> tip of her nose in proportion to her nostril. I'm not sure how to... Let's see, the tip of her nose to the... This edge of our nostril is the same as from that side of her nostril to the outside of her nostril. So tip of her nose. Yeah, I'm not sure how to how else to check that. I just I think this whole this whole thing is a little bit off. Like maybe, no, that seems about right. How about the right, the forehead on her dark side? Like does she maybe need a little more hair at the top? Okay. Or maybe just the actual whole top of her forehead. Everyone has suggestions and I feel like, which is good, but then me reading them, I feel like I'm bossing you around. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, I definitely don't have this quite as well as I did the first one. But that's okay for being, you know, in a chair that I'm trying not to block the picture, I feel, I feel okay. Yeah, once you start getting some shading in there, then it's really like the shading really matters because mm -hmm. now I have values and, and then that makes the forms, you know, all relative to each other. Um, Rena says she's lovely. She oh. is lovely. <laughs> oh, she looks a little... do appear to be a little closer together. You checked that though, didn't you? I did. I don't I don't know. I don't know. 
it might have to do with something else um, like some shading or like some other thing that I've botched Tammy says I see the critique but my drawing looks nothing like yours uh -huh. <laughs> we can all sit here and say what uh -huh. we're saying that's all right <laughs> I don't mind Yeah, on this one, I definitely, like, it definitely flowed out of me a little easier. It still has its problems. You know, it's still not exactly her. You know, but as far as an exercise in, um, just as an exercise to practice, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. Heather says, watching the evolution is fantastic. I can see that mine is off, but as you continue to adjust and add, I can see where I was neglecting to notice shading and details. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Polly, what supplies do I need? You know how much I love accumulating supplies. <laughs> Sketch um. pad? So again, I'm using um, Bristol <clears throat> is the name of the kind of paper I'm using. Um, charcoal, just y you'll see at, um, if you go to Jerry's Artorama or on to Dick Blick, you'll see um, charcoal sticks. And what are those um, blending yellows? I don't know what they're called. Look up, like, see if they're called smudge, charcoal smudge sticks. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to, like... Blending stump? Yeah. That could be it. I kind of want to ignore you guys for a minute and sort of get in here because I feel like I can get it better. <laughs> So wait, the blending stumps don't have any... No, there's no charcoal on them. Okay. And then if you finish it, what would um, you use? I would use... Um, here, I'll, I can go get it. Okay. Um, I'll just go get it. It's called a spray fixative. Um, there's two kinds. I'll, I'll see if I have both. Fixative. Fixative. So one is Fumi. Um, it's called Workable Fixative by Krylon. And the other was recommended me, to me by Rich Ohanna, which is this non-toxic, all-natural, odor-free. It's called Spectrafix and Dega Fixative. Um, and it is a little scarier to use because it kind of like darkens your darkens your picture upon uh, application. They both do, but um, all right. I'm gonna turn this towards me a minute and really just like go at it and see what kinds of changes I can make someone, happen. Yeah, someone did say would shading some of her left shoulder help the eye see her. Do that on the first one? Not really. I think her eyes look too close together because her nose was too small. So bear with me for a second. That's gonna look like I am just messing up my picture, but that's okay. That's what has to happen sometimes. 
when I get when I get a little looser, um, I sometimes do better. Yeah, I think I had all of this just sort of tucked back a little too much. So in other words, when I draw, the, the reason her face was looking more upright was because I had every, I'd had everything to upright. So when I go straight up from this crease, I'm at this highlight in the middle of her nose. And before I was at the, I was back here at the corner of her eye. So I'm moving that forward and then that will push everything else forward. So this is good. You guys are going to see how, um, how I can fix, fix what I'm doing here. And then that's going to bring her lips out farther. And then she won't have such a Jay Leno chin. Sorry, Jay Leno, uh, chin because everything will be where it's supposed to be. So that's what it was, I think. So I'm glad I didn't put any fixative on it because I was able to lift all that stuff. I'll show you what this does. soon. I just wanted to get it to a little bit of a better place. Well, she changed. I'm not sure it's totally better, but. Well, I will keep tweaking and then show you where I end up. I do wish it came together like in one magical swift moment for <laughs> everybody to see, but I'm not worried about it.
I'll show you what this looks like. You want to make sure it doesn't have like goobers on it. But it's not as obvious as on like a pastel how it how it darkens it. It's made with casein, so if you're vegan, it is not vegan. Oh, it just bubbled my paper. It's a little wet. Now I, now I can't work. <laughs> Looks good. You really, uh... I'll figure it out. Oh, I can't really work on it now because I just made it wet. <laughs> when do you like to use the grid? Um, the grid is great for... If I'm doing a drawing and small to large or even one to one so to have your picture you either you can either do a grid like this or you can i was telling you guys about the app that you can put your photographs in and manipulate them i think it's called colorama um and there's a grids on there like so you you put your picture oh, okay. in there in and then it, you can put a grid on it and then um, and then if I were to just sketch, um, this is smaller, this is smaller than this, but if I were to make the proportionate adjustment, you know, um, that I'm doing, I didn't have a grid big enough for this. I guess I can do it like this. I got it. I've got it. Little tape. Yeah, maybe this will help me fix my drawing. Thanks for pointing out I had more tools. Okay, I can put it, so now we're one to one. Let me put it where something makes sense here. Let me just see like, okay, I'm gonna put it where I have the outer line pretty much, does that have a glare? Cause it does for me, sorry, I have to turn it a little bit. Okay, so I've got this. Um, so now I can see, I can see corner of the mouth lined up with, you know, side of the nostril. So I even have this out a little bit. And like I said, now I've sprayed it with fixative. So we're, fix we're all, I fixed it. We're all botched. Um, I can see. Are they two inch squares? I made one and a half inch squares. It doesn't matter. I made one and a half inch squares. Okay. So I could like draw my grid on here. I could have another one that lays on over that. it. Yeah. But you could lightly sketch. Uh, whoops, what am I doing? Where am I? I'm here. I was here. Not here. You could lightly sketch, um, before you even start drawing, you could lightly sketch your, your grid. And it's great because it, you can automatically see what's in line with what. So one of the reasons that our eyes look far apart is because I don't have, or too close together is because I don't have this eye low enough. So it wants to live down here a bit more. So some other stuff is still right, but that was one thing. Um, let's see. 
So let me come down here. This, okay, this is super interesting. Okay, Look, my drawing's all messed up and I'm gonna show you how. <laughs> this line, I'll make sure this is right, lined up on here, right? Um, this line is above the corner of her mouth here, goes straight across, but her entire lower lip is above it. Okay, so on mine, if I draw this line above the corner of her mouth, and it's coming over here to her ear, Now look, my lower lip is totally, I don't have the angle of this right at all. So either this has to come down more, and then all of this is up more, but I think basically this has to come down. So down, down, down. This comes across, and then there's a lot of fullness up here. So all of this is like above that line. Um, yeah, stuff like that. It's just, it's a great tool. Um, I didn't start like full on with it because it's a whole it's its own whole thing um you know you could you could totally set your drawing up this way so that looks a little bit better in terms of <laughs> the slant of her face don't totally have her features accurate yet in terms of it looking like her but um I can keep working on that and I can fix her eye. Yeah, so I have the ear a little high, but that's not like, you know, like I said, if I were doing her portrait, yes, I would work really hard at representing the person, you know, making sure I was super accurate. But in terms of like drawing a face, you know, pretty well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that her ear is a little high, so. Jen's asking, have you tried proportional dividers? Just got one to try out with sculptural felting. They were designed for scaling drawings. I have not, I have not. So it's interesting to see, like, I don't know. I feel like that one's, that one's pretty good. I'm like, I'm gonna put the pretty one in the, They're in the front. Good. <laughs> oh. Um, I have not, uh, I, could look into that. She looks less grumpy. <laughs> yes. Yes, she looks pretty sullen in that in that picture, but no, the mm. fix she looks less. Yeah. So the you know, hopefully you guys are seeing that there's a lot that we can do to help ourselves and that practice is an important part of it. You know, no one just starts drawing like a demon unless they have super special, <laughs> super special gift. Um, so yeah, have fun with it and draw what you love, you know, trees, horses, dogs, cats, flowers, um, that will make it more fun and more engaging for you. Like writing what you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got over my fear of painting in public when I went to, um, I used to go to Saratoga w with a gallery and we would paint on the porch. And until then, you know, the thought of anyone watching me was <laughs> crippling. Yeah. And then I, I realized it's not that bad and I like it. And that mostly people are 
you know, impressed and like seeing, like, I'm not a huge reel or like TikTok fan, but I will stop on a, t- uh, on a art time lapse. Yeah, like I, I cool love, to watch it. I love seeing stuff evolve and the decisions that every artist makes. I used to watch my friend Booth Malone. If you want to check him out, look, look him up. I used to watch him paint and just be kind of in all of the decisions that he made, the color and contrast decisions that were so different from what what I would do. Mm-hmm. So it's fun to watch it. It's fun to watch it unfold. But um, I can't wait to see what you guys drew and what you draw. And don't be afraid to put your drawings on fanfare. I will, you know, we'll 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 break everyone into the idea that that's okay. Um, I mean, I don't know if we need to make a sec- separate group or what, but I'm not worried about it right now. I, I would like to see what you what you've made on there, and um, I'll keep working on this, and I'll show you how you can take kind of a hot mess and make it and make it better. Should we put a post on Fanfare that people could put in the comments their sketches, so they're kind of all landing on one? post or should people just uh, post to post we could do both I mean I'm, I'm fine with both you know what I mean like uh, yes we can make a post but also feel free to make your own post um, and maybe I can share some of the paintings I've done recently um i painted one figure oh my gosh like six times <laughs> pretty much using the same reference so yeah negative shapes super important all of it all of it and i, I you know i'm trying to talk through as i'm doing things but um It's dry now, so I can mess with it some more. But yeah, definitely without trying to talk at the same time, there's more There's more that I can do, more that I will do. Um, Keep trying. I, I need to get these lines off her face. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will see you guys on the 31st is our next, next time, so. I think, unless we throw something in there. Well, that would be crazy. What would be crazy? Throwing something else in there. You think? No, I don't know. <laughs> 31st is the next one we have on the calendar. I know. It's not that far away, mm-hmm. I guess, now. So now that this has fixed it up on it, I can't erase it as well. I can get my little electric eraser and see if I can. Fiber stuff fairy out of there. hints. No. No hints. No hints. Except that. Um, hmm. I guess there's no hints. I'm sorry. We think you're going to like it. We do think you're going to like it. It's big. It's big. So that we have the benefit, all the benefit for the fundraiser. I have a little white chalk here, I might cheat.
All right, everyone. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I think I've 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 done my my best work for the day, or at least for on film. And hopefully, um, we got through some stuff that'll get you guys excited to draw. Painting is the next next step. What? Kyla's always no hints and Sarah is always on the <laughs> No, edge. I really want, I do, I always want to share a little bit. I share a little bit. I mean, you did say the word. I did say the word today. In this video. I did, and I was aware of it. <laughs> and I did it pretty recently. Oh, okay. I have no recollection of that. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There's your hint. All right, everybody. I'm not going to turn around and be weird. I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs> say, I can't And the be. microphone has, like, sunk. Here, I I'll can, make it out I of the way. I can be so weird. <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you all for being here. And I um, can't wait to see you on the 31st.